Hey everybody, it's Durger Time. Welcome to an episode of Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 and welcome to our introduction episode to a brand new Let's Play series that we're going to be doing in the game. Um, as you obviously have seen from the title of the screen, you already know what it is. We are playing New Japan Pro Wrestling, but not quite. We're doing an alternate take. Um, sort of something in my head that I've been kind of brewing around. Think of this like a wrestling Mandela effect of, of a what if. What if in September of 2018, uh, the new president of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Harold May, uh, whose goal, having since I guess it was March or May when he uh, first joined, has been about trying to make New Japan a more global, more Western-focused product, um, this is going to be a sort of what if of what if he decided to spin it off and make its own little sub promotion to focus specifically on the Western audience. Sounds crazy, right? Well, I mean, not really. Uh, if you think about what NXT is doing right now, uh, they kind of made their own UK brand to try to capitalize on how hot the UK wrestling scene is right now. So they have their own people kind of folded into the group. And that's what we're kind of doing. So we set up a brand new promotion, New Japan Pro Wrestling America. Uh, and we are going to be playing not as the CEO of New Japan, but we're going to be playing as the booker. So we're going to be playing as Rocky Romero, who's been gifted the position by Harold May as head booker of the U.S. division of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, we're located in the Southwest. We are a regional size because we are really just focused on the West Coast this time. And um, we'll try to move forward. And we're in an alliance with New Japan World, obviously. So because we're part of the same branch. And um, yeah, so I mean, that that's the, the gist of it. So we're going to be playing a little bit differently than what we normally play because we're going to be playing as a booker. What that means, if you aren't familiar with the system, is typically in New Japan or ugh, typically in total extreme wrestling you play as the owner of the company and that means that you get to call all the shots and that's it right like that that's that's the whole thing well we're a sub company so it doesn't make sense to to be calling all the shots for that company because there's a ceo there's a board of you know directors there's chairman there's all these other things that are going on as well as a parent company that is very interested in what we're doing. So in order to best simulate that and kind of give a different experience, we're going to have to play as the booker. The booker provides his own challenge. We can lose the game, essentially, by um, getting fired because Harold May will have an approval rating of us and he'll have his own specific goals, requirements, hiring metrics, uh, you know, attendance metrics. There's a whole host of things that he's going to have potentially over the course of the year that we are going to have to aim for. And if our approval rating of him his, his go too low, we could easily uh, find ourselves unemployed. Um, that will certainly be the end of the run for certain. Um, we're going to try not to have that happen. But also our objective is obviously going to be trying to make it a global scene and to kind of face WWE head on and see if we can... Um, we can take some of its market share. So, you know, this is sort of Japan invading America. And uh, the beachheads are certainly the California region. That is that is the Normandy. And we are going to move on and push forward all the way over to the East Coast. Uh, that's certainly the goal, at least. So we're going to select as a booker. Um, yep, that's fine. We are now the head booker of pro wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling America. There we are right there. And this episode is going to be kind of a tour. Let's take a look at the promotion, see what we have, um, and then kind of course our kind of set a course for ourselves going forward. It's September 1st, 2018, so it's right after the G1 has ended. And um, we have an excellent approval rating by Harold May. We have a million dollars in the bank. And we are a regional size. So New Japan has given us a pretty sizable amount of money to kind of work with. Uh, we do have a show coming up, which uh, we have some shows set up, but we're going to have more set up in the future. And uh, right now we have the Destruction Series. So in September, New Japan runs their Destruction Tour. 
And uh, we're part of that with the Destruction in America series. Now, that's the other thing to talk about. Let's talk about the product first. What what do we look like here as a, a creative company? Well, we're, we're Pyro Risu, so we're pretty much identical to New Japan's style because we're an offshoot of them. Um, so what that means is there's no women's division. Um, there should be a weight split. Um... Okay, it doesn't really have any effect on unless I'm doing AI booking. So um, it will be a self-garnered weight split. But there is a weight split. Um, some people argue whether there's a face or heel divide in New Japan. And I know different mods have a different um, different take on that. I fall into the camp that there definitely is a face and heel divide. It's just that their booking is a lot better <laughs> than what you typically see. And there's more nuance. Um, you know, there there's more layers of gray in characters, but there's definitely heels and faces. Um, but within that degree, uh, they jump back and forth because fa faces in New Japan can act heelish when they're dealing with people they really don't like, but there's still faces and it can be a transition. If you If you don't believe me, look up you know, Kenny Omega's earlier work when he came in in New Japan very clearly as a heel and doing very heelish things, except for when it had to do with his, you know, former golden lover, um, where he was, had a relationship with him and it was very clear that he was on his side, even though he was acting very heelish. That doesn't mean that he's not a heel at that time. It just means that he has certain alliances. There's more nuance to it. And then now, if you look at Kenny Omega now, it's very clear that he's a complete face because he's had a transition over the course of that time to take the Bullet Club elite into more of a face direction for the company, right? So so there's the transitions or shifts back and forth. So I, I'm, I'm falling on the side of there definitely is a face and heel divide. Um, we're heavy tradition, very low mainstream, very low comedy. None, no cult. It's very by the books. A little risque, um, just usually with like, uh, you know, managers and things like that. Uh, medium, modern. Uh, key feature is realism. And that's about it. Low for kind of everything else. Um, a lot of tag matches, a lot of tournaments, a lot of one on ones, not a lot of DQs, very little everything else. So, and we're going to kind of follow the format of a New Japan show as closely as we can as we sort of role play through this. Um, sponsorship will be quite tough because it's a hard promotion to, to pitch. Um, they were rated much more on performance and popularity. Uh, hardcore skills are not very effective. Uh, they will need a gimmick. There is a focus on storytelling. Uh, they will be annoyed by basically sports entertainment, quote unquote, or basically like screwy or dusty finishes. You know, anything that has to do with a lot of DQs, uh, they will be annoyed by. Um, that can be used in our favor if we're trying to really get a, get heat on a storyline or a uh, heel, but you, you want to use it sparingly. Uh, they, they are not keen on highly risky matches or highly risky angles. So, pretty simple. Uh, should be easy to book. Um, so that that's pretty much what New Japan is. But we're, we're just continuing that into the American uh, branch. Let's go ahead while we're looking and doing a tour of the company here. Um, we also want to talk about our broadcasting. Because one of the things that we own uh, for our tour highlights, we have... Um, a deal with Access TV, but we also own. Where are you? You own broadcaster. Here we are. We also own New Japan World America. So with the advent of the Western invasion of America, uh, New Japan World got its own exclusive app. 
Uh, it is v- still small in the United States, but it has good coverage. Very small in Canada, teeny tiny in Mexico. Uh, British islands, very small, tiny in Japan, and then very small in Europe and Australia. So if we wanted to, we would need to invest in increasing its coverage. But this is what we're starting out with. And this is where most of our... Uh, pretty much break this is where we are uh are putting most of our shows on um see subscription broadcasters incur costs and generate revenue based on subscriber counts each month which is based on a company's popularity in each region company will break even if it has 71 popularity in a region anything below that will create a loss which while being above that level will create a small profit um so you know, uh, we are breaking even each month on subscriptions at present. That could change, and we'll have to deal with it. Um, in fact, it may drop very drastically. We will have to see. Uh, but for now, this is where we're going to be posting our own stuff. Now, we're not part of the New Japan world in general for their subscription service, um, in which case they would have a larger following in Japan. But because we're highlighting to a western english-speaking audience for the most part is really focused on being a branch of the united states and then to a smaller extent some of the other areas um so that that's sort of going to be used for our shows we also have tour highlights which will be on access tv because we are a touring company so uh we're using Fleisch's mod and what that means is for the most part we are pretty much going to be uh, very similar to Japan, uh, New Japan in his mod, in which they are they tour, I believe, 11 out of 12 months that have one month off. We're doing the same thing, we're just inverted because if they have a month off for um, the, I think, the week, the month before G1, we have it during G1. And the idea being that um, our talent would theoretically be part of the G1 tournament in japan so we would not have anybody to tour for the most part and you know our main parent company would want us to have uh all our resources committed to their main prestigious show um i i don't think i set january because i think we have our own thing because wrestle kingdom is only in one day you know we can send our people over it's not a big deal uh speaking of that we also are part of an alliance so we are part of the new japan world uh we can we are that that is with us with uh rev pro ring of honor and cmll all of them are used typically for excursions and we will be probably no exception um we can actually borrow people that are not part of our roster but are from any of these we can set an agreement with them Um, so that kind of gives us an extra bit of our roster that we can use we also have titles so one of the things i added to the new japan world area is that idea that if we have two different new japan pro wrestling companies it would make sense to have some type of titles that um carry over so I come as it was really back and forth on this, and what I decided was the never open weight and six man would make the most sense. Um, they're kind of mid card titles in both companies, and and they kind of would ebb and flow back and forth. Um, instead of doing one of the more prestigious ones like the IWGPs and having them set all on here, the idea is to never overweight people can be on both shows easily and it's just some way to have some continuity between both brands. Um, Speaking of titles, we do have some of our own. We have to set more and I'm still not positive on this. Um, Let me know uh, before I change it. I, I, I think... I'm not sure what I want to do with this. I, I think we might just set up a heavyweight title for the United States. But right now, the IWGP United States Championship is sort of floating. We might make it the main belt. I'm not positive. Um, this is set in September. So spoilers. Obviously, right now, Cody Rhodes is the champion. But right now, uh, Juice Robinson is. Um, I don't know. Let me know if, what you think. I, I, I see an advantage of a having being a floating championship um, and having our own heavyweight championship belt. 
But at the same time, I also see it making a lot of sense that the United States brand, um, it its belt is the United States title. Like, that would make a lot of sense to me. Um, so basically, we have our own offshoots, though, for the tag teams and the heavyweights. We also need a six-man um, and a uh, U.S. regular tag team championship. So we'll have to kind of set that up. Um, but we'll set that up soon. They are vacant currently, and the only belt that currently has anybody is uh, Juice, because obviously he is currently the champion. Um, and that moves on to our roster. So if we take a look real quick at our roster, uh, we have some people. So um, so we got to change some names in here um, real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. And for some reason, that still has that glitch where it wants to change his name. Don't know why. Um... Change this name to, there we go. Okay, so who do we got? Well, we don't have a lot of people, but we have a lot of the people you would expect. So we don't have um, Kenny Omega, right? That would be the one that you would really want. Well, he's got a written contract with New Japan. Um, we can alliance him out and, and get loans, but they're not going to give up their heavyweight championship for a B brand United States. It's just not going to happen. We can loan them, but it just you're not going to get them, and that makes sense. Uh, you know, you're not going to put your top star in Japan and send him over and to like the B brand to try to build it up. You know, you, you'll have him come over, but you're not going to have him exclusive there. So what we have is we have, uh, you know, a smorgasbord of people that are basically the Western division of New Japan, the people that would make sense, people that have some popularity in America that represent New Japan. Um, so you have, you know, Bad Luck Fale, uh, Chase Owens, Chuck Taylor, uh, Cody, Dave Boy Smith, Finley, uh, Don Callis is our color commentator. We got Trent. Uh, so that makes sense. We got Hangman Page. Uh, Harold May is sort of just here for our um, authority figure contract kind of thing. Uh, we got Jay White with the dumbest freaking hair. Oh, I gotta change that image. <sighs> I thought I changed it in the uh, the main save, but I guess not. There we go. Oh boy, this goofy ass young lion haircut. It's so good. Um, we should probably change his name to Switchblade. Switchblade Jay White. There you go. Um, so you know, again, people you kind of expect. Um, Lance Archer. We got. There you go. Uh, Marty Scroll, Matt and Nick Jackson, Michael Elgin, Ro Rocky, obviously, because we're playing him, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, uh, Toei Hanara, Trent Barretta, Will Ospreay, and Zach Sabre. So a pretty good roster. It's a little light. So we're go Oh, and we had Jeff Cobb. Sorry. Um, we need to fill this up a little bit. Uh, quite a bit, too. I, I think we need, we need a minimum of... 20 active wrestlers, and we have 23 total people, um, which, you know, that's just on the line, because I think we have Callus, Ka, we have ha Callus, May, Rocky, so we have, we have like, 19 wrestlers, um, with Rocky being a occasional wrestler, but currently, well, actually, his push is a mid-carder right now, he should actually be, um, he should be a road agent, but um, we could still use him to wrestle every once in a while. We can just use him from commentary once in a while. So he's got a lot of options. Um, we need a couple extra people. We also need to move into our stables and our teams. Uh, a heavy focus in New Japan, of course, is the, the, the factions. That is like one of the greatest things about them is that they have this amazing synergy between all these factions that are with them you know sometimes if you watch uh, like a western show like a wwe or something like that um there's there's like a couple groups but they always feel like isolated um they always work the same way which is that there's always like a group that uses their force 
on individuals and they're usually just heels instead in japan it's more like everyone's part of a group for the most part and they align with a group that's based on their own wrestling style their goals and whether they're like a face or a heel so there's kind of two heel factions there's kind of two face factions there's a couple neutral ones you know there's like there's technically like six factions in uh new japan with some of various sizes uh for the most part we're gonna have to focus on the main four and that's you know lij los ingobernable i can't even say it you know los Los Ingobernable, Ingobernable, man, I can't, I can't, cannot say anything in Spanish, it's just the worst, the Ungovernables of Japan, there you go, so we gotta focus on them, uh, we gotta build them up, we got Bullet Club, we got um, Suzuki-gun, and we have um, Chaos, we technically have two branches of bullet club because they split up and in this timeline they've already split so we have to address that and um one of the things looking at this right now is we have a very light lack of lij members so we have to look at maybe uh picking up the roster and seeing who we can pick for um for building up the lij brand we, we want about four to five wrestlers in each uh stable so we'll do that real quick All right, so let's build up our stables here real quick. See what we have. So first thing, easiest thing is let's do Bullet Club. And our members are, let's see who we got here. So we might want to split them up into both, but we have, now obviously Jay White is now Bullet Club, but um, at the time, of this time at this airing he's not so we'll have to keep that in mind uh hangman marty cody and matt and nick i think we're gonna have to make them i think we're gonna make two factions for them um and then we have kind of chase owens there we go so that's six members. Basically how their their branding tends to work is that there's a, a heavyweight person, which is Cody. They have a junior, um, a tag heavyweight tag team, and then a junior heavyweight tag team kind of thing. That that tends to be their, their focus is basically they want somebody that could compete in every division because there's hard division lines. Uh, so that makes sense. I think that's pretty much what we got there. So actually, let's rename them to Bullet Club. We'll actually call them straight up the Elite or BC the Elite. And then we have... So it's interesting that they originally were called Firing Squad, but right now they're calling them Bullet Club OG, which makes a lot of sense. Basically the Tongans. And we will do... Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. We have Bad Luck Fale, and that might be who we have in that brand right now. So we might have to look at hiring some people to kind of uh, bolster their roster for Bullet Club OG. Um, do I have anybody else? No, 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 no. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, that's them. So we, we definitely need maybe two, three more people there. Uh, we need... LJ America, which we don't have any. Or actually, would it be... Los Ingobernable... The America, America, right? That that seems right. That sounds, eh, close enough. <laughs> I 
Uh, so this one, I we don't have anybody part of that division, really. They're almost all exclusively Japanese. So we're going to have to scout out uh, maybe some CMLL members and see if we can pull them to be part of our roster full-time. And uh, we need Chaos. Makes sense. Now, Chaos currently is kind of in shambles right now in, in real life. But uh, Rocky, Jay, um, I believe Trent and Chuck are also Elijah or Chaos members. Um, and Will Osprey. I think that's everybody. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, that looks right. So they also need one because Rocky really doesn't count. Um, so they might need two people. We'll have to take a look at what they need. Um, and then we have Suzuki Goon, Suzuki's personal army, um, who's currently. Suzuki's not with us here, but we have quite a few. Oh, I forgot Kushida for, um, Kushida's also on our group, and he will be part of Chaos. Um, Lance Archer, we need David Boy Smith Jr., Park Killer Elite Squad. Um, you know, Finley might be Chaos, too. I'm not sure about that. There's also like the weird subgroup of of I call them the Isle of Misfit Toys of New Japan, where they just they're not really part of any group. They're the part of like the quote unquote New Japan Army, which is nothing, which is just like the baby faces and the older guys. I'm not sure if Finley is chaos or not. I'll take a look at that. Um, okay, so we need Arthur Archer, David Boy Smith Jr. We need. Um, Zack Saber, who will basically be the leader. Oh wait, 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 we're in BC Elite. Get out of there. Um, though, actually, while we're here, we might as well add Kashida, who I forgot to mention. Yeah, so we have Kashida. Uh, Kashida actually, you were gonna say like, well, almost everyone here is like American or Tongan. Why is Kashida, who is a Jap uh, Japanese wrestler here, but he actually wrestled quite a long for quite a bit of time in America in Ring of Honor. And, you know, with Alex Shelley's time splitters, it makes a lot of sense to have him here. Uh, he's got a good namesake. And, you know, maybe we'll actually bring Alex Shelley into the mix. And that would be kind of a fun reunion. Um, so, okay, where were we? We were um, Suzuki-Goon. We need Suzuki-Goon. That's right. So our leader of... Suzuki Goon America is Zack Saber, who's basically become kind of his weird protege. Um, Dave Boy Smith Jr. and Lance Archer are their heavy to eight tag team. And do we have anybody else here? I don't think so. I don't think I have anybody else that's part of Suzuki Goon. So we need more P yeah, because like Yeah, like El Desperado is normally part of it, which we might pick up. We might grab him. Um that might not be a bad option. So we need some more people for Suzuki. We need pretty much a whole roster for uh L I J or L I A, I guess. Uh Chaos is pretty much set. Bullet Club OG needs a few more. Um uh, my 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 goal for Bullet Club OG is ultimately to scout some people, um, so actually we'll go ahead and do that now. Um, I'm gonna put them on. Uh, you know what? We'll jump into the roster. It'll be easier. I'm gonna scout some people and try to put them in a, a short list. Is our goal? We're gonna go ahead and look at their roster. Um, who we want is. This will never happen. Um, but we're going to shortlist Finn Balor. There's no way we're ever going to get him. Wow, he's 37? I didn't realize he was so much old. I, for some reason in my head, he was like 33 or something, like early 30s. I didn't realize he was so, I don't want to say so old, but, you know. 
some of you guys, it's like ancient, I know, what some of you guys are like in high school, but <laughs> makes me feel bad when I'm looking at that, and I'm like, I'm, I'm 31, and I'm like, oh, oh boy, here, where, what happened to my life? Um, anyways, uh, we also want Luke Gallows and... Um, We'll shortlist him. We want, we want Anderson as well. Seeing what they how he spells it. It's Carl. The K. There you are. Um, again, I, I doubt that we we're gonna get them, but you know sometimes weird things happen and um Oh, you know what? And there's one thing we need to do, I think, um in the Settings, we probably should really have um, Neville's contract release. That's something I did not do in here, and it did happen in the beginning of September. So let's go ahead and. Um, what's he in here as? Pac, maybe? What's, what's his real name? Is it just Neville in here? Yeah, it is just Neville. One thing I hate jumping between mods is that some people have their real names and some people have their most recently used name and some people have their original indie name. It's, it's really annoying. Okay, so Neville, your we need your contract. No, I don't need this one. I need your worker contract because... What is going on? Why can't I type? There we go. Okay. Um, see under something else? Did I already do it? Maybe I just didn't realize it? I don't think I did. Who are you wrestling for? Um, business. I can't see it here. Hmm. Let's go take a look. That might be our first pick. Neville is unemployed. Uh, availability 56 to hey hey guess what we got it um we're short list we're gonna negotiate Ugh, okay well in 56 days sir you are ours um neville might make a fantastic member of lia i can't think of anybody more tranquilo than walking away from a contract and just saying stuff it not showing up on TV and waiting at a contract. Um, that is a big, <laughs> that is definitely going to be an LIA member. Um, so, I mean, we got our people from, from WWE that we wanted to shortlist. Um, some people I was thinking of for, for uh, LIA, you know, Bandito might not be a bad pick. Um, a lot of talent really fits the kind of persona of sort of this uh you know when i think of like lij people always think of like oh here's this these weird you know misfit out like outlaw outcast characters um and, and definitely that has part of it they also have a very heavy um you know mexican lucha libre influence with their styles or masks or things like that um and obviously a lot of that has to do with them having started out in cmll during excursion and kind of building their vision of their group that way so bandito would make a lot of sense oh he's not available in america um that seems wrong he's wrestled in america we might have we might have to fix that he is definitely Okay, hold on. Can I fix that right now? Because he, I can tell you for a fact that he wrestles in America. I have seen him wrestle in America. I have been to shows where he has wrestled in America. Don't tell me that he does not wrestle in America. Um, he also, I think, has a very basic understanding of Japanese. So we'll update that. Um, he is available to wrestle in America. I know that for a fact. There. I hate messing with this, but sometimes you got to fix it. I, I know, I mean, you know, balance and stuff, I get that, but he, he can wrestle in America. I've seen it. All right. Also, holy crap, are you really that cheap? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> you might you might not be skilled correctly. We'll do a three year contract, not cover this. Um and you know what? I'll give you an extra ten dollars um just because and I'm not going to give him I'm just normal utilization. I'm not going to do anything different with him there. Uh, make the deal. Sign that up. Easy. That will be our first LIJ member. Uh, definitely. Um, we can look at Dragon Lee, too. Though he's he's written um, in him. So that, ain't, that is not going to work. Um, hmm. How about Phoenix? Phoenix not, might not be. Phoenix is wrestling everywhere right now, though. Um, but Phoenix might not be a bad pick for Lij. A lot more expensive. Um, we'll still do a three-year contract. Seven. Try to go down to seven fifty, and push it from there. That's not a bad option. Um, hmm. Who else could we get? Hmm. That's tough. I don't know. I'm trying to think of who would fit that mindset. I mean, you know, I mean, Jeff Cobb isn't wrestling. He's not really part of any group right now. Maybe we'll make him part of LIJ America or L L I A. Might not be a bad option. Um, uh, hmm. I don't know. It's gonna be tough. That's a tough decision. Who do you guys think we should add? Let me know. Let me know who we should add and to where. Um, we definitely have some potential there to grow some interesting directions, and we want people that kind of fit that mindset and and fit that lifestyle. Um, why why do Chuck Taylor and Trent not have preloaded? Best friends. Okay. Why do they have no experience? Or low experience. That's weird. Um, hmm. We need... Let's add some of these in here real quick. Some of these are questionable experience levels, but what do I know, I guess? <laughs> Uh, Lance Archer and David Boy Smith Jr. Killer Elite Squad. Perfect. That's in there. Wonderful. Killer Elite Squad has more experience than Tonga and Tonga. Hmm. They also don't have the right name, which is interesting. Uh, oh, well. Can't have everything, I guess. Um, And we need... Matt and Nick. Okay, young bucks. So we got the basic foundation here. Um, you know, we are pretty much ready to start running it. Um, what I do want to hear from you guys before we kind of get started, we do need to fill out these stables. So let me know your suggestions. We want about, you know, we want basically one person available for each division. And we do have to add a couple extra titles. I think we should have a heavyweight and in the U.S., but let me know what you think about that, whether the U.S. should be our heavyweight championship or whether it should be a floating championship still. We still need to add our regular heavyweight tag team. Oops, excuse me. Our regular heavyweight tag team as well as our um, um, our, our trios champ. Oh, actually, no, we have the open. That's fine. So we just need our, our regular tag team. Um and maybe a heavyweight title. So what that looks like for us then is we need basically six people in uh, the a minimum of six people per stable. So we need our heavyweight champion contender um, and maybe a backup. Uh, we need a junior heavyweight champion contender. We need a heavyweight champion tag contender. And we need a heavy junior heavyweight tag contender. So that's like some like seven people we need. Um, so we still need about four more people in OG. 
We still need maybe one or two people in Chaos. We still need a whole roster in LIA. And we need about four more people in Suzuki-Goon. In the comments below, before the next episode, that's your homework, ladies and gentlemen. Give me some people that you think would fit into those roles and give me a reason why you think they will fit in those roles. I figure you guys are going to be pretty active, so I kind of want to see your best pitches of who we put into those areas and why. Um, anyways, that is it for the introduction of the brand. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to just start running it. So um, once you guys give me some of your ideas for the stables and, you know, we'll get those signed up and we'll start running the show, starting with Destruction in America. Um, and yeah, it'll be pretty fun. I'm really excited about this promotion. I'm really excited about this Let's Play. I've been wanting to run a uh, New Japan for a while. I love, I love tournaments and I love like tag matches and all that type of stuff that, that New Japan does. I want to do that here. I, some of the most fun I've done was the Super Cup and the NWA Let's Play. Um, and having more of that is only going to be more and more fun to do. And there's certainly going to be a lot of that because we're going to have our own G1 in America. We're going to have, you know, tag tournaments, the junior heavyweight tournaments, all the, the fun stuff that you would expect. Um, it would be a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. We might even do one that I think might be pretty interesting going forward. Um, one of the Super Cups, we might actually do a uh, user poll for all the wins. That could be kind of interesting to see who you guys want to push um you guys will get the steering wheel in that that case and you will actually get to decide who wins uh each fight that should be pretty fun uh, we have a lot of plans going forward with this one i'm really excited about it i hope you guys are too anyways once again that is it for me today um, i will see you on the next show of new japan pro wrestling america thanks for watching <laughs>